Hello everyone, this is Atisha, Developer Advocate at Arcana and today in this video I'm going to show you how to integrate Arcana Auth SDK in your DAP. If you're not aware of Arcana Auth SDK, it basically allows your DAP users to log in and authenticate to your Web3 application seamlessly with the familiarity and simplicity of Web2 login experience while ensuring secure access. I'm going to build a basic Web3 application in React via which you would be able to onboard users via social and passwordless authentication mechanisms supported by Arcana Auth SDK. I'm going to build this application from scratch, so feel free to get started with me. Also, while building, if you get any queries, feel free to shoot them on our Discord, the link of which is given in the description box down below. So before getting started using Arcana Auth SDK in our DAP, we first need to register it on Arcana's developer dashboard and configure the DAP settings. Once that configuration is done, we would be ready to build our application in React. So you just need to go to start building and it will take you to dashboard.arcana.network wherein we first need to log in via any of the social authentication present here. I will log in via Google, select the account and here it will take you to the dashboard screen. So you first need to provide the app name. So let's call it Arcana Auth Integration. React and also you can choose the region where you want to store the data. So I'll keep it as default as Asia and click on create. Once this is created, we then need to fill in some details into the auth section. So here, if you navigate to the auth section, here you see that there are multiple social authentication available, which we can add to our application that we are going to build. For example, Google, Twitch, Discord, GitHub and Twitter. Also, you get the option to uh, also log in your users via passwordless authentication. So as you can see here, we need to fill in the details such as client ID and client secret. Now, if you are new to this and you're not aware from where you can get all of this information uh, to be filled here, you simply can go to docs.arcana.network and here in the documentation, if you click on get started, Within how to guides, if you go to authenticate here, as you can see on the left, there are multiple options. So for example, if I go to discord, I am given all the steps via which I would be able to get the uh, client ID and client secret that I need to put on my dashboard. So you can follow the steps that are given here and fill it over here. Once you are done with that, you simply need to enable the UI mode and then hit on save. Once this is saved, your application will be assigned an app ID, which we will use later. Okay, so this is saved. If I go to my dashboard, here you can see the app ID that is given to me is 2296, which I'm going to use later. So once we are done with registering our DAP and configuring the settings, it's time to now head on to our terminal and start building our project. So I'll go to my terminal. I want to make my project in say the downloads folder. So I'll go to my downloads and you simply need to write the command npx create react app and the app name. So let me call it arcana auth integration react. It will take some time and it will create a new react app project to our downloads folder with the name arcana auth integration react. Great, our project folder is created. Now let's navigate to our project folder and start up a development server to see how our web application looks like. So I'm going to open up the project that I have just created. As you can see, here are multiple files and folders already available to me. So I'm just going to go to my terminal and write up the command npm start. Okay, so this is how our application looks like. We are going to modify it and will allow the DAP users to log in to a particular application and will also give them a logout option. Great. So now let's go back to our Visual Studio code and here let's open up another terminal. So here we need to install two of the dependencies. The very first one is Arcana Auth SDK and the second one would be the React Load Spinner, which we are going to talk about later. So let's first install Arcana Auth. So let's write npm install Arcana slash Auth. And here 
we are also going to install the React Load Spinner. So if you read here, this React Spinner Loader provides a simple React SVG Spinner component, which can be implemented for async await operation before data loads to the view. Since some of the data might be loading in the background, we want that at that point in time, there should be a spinner that should be available on the screen. So in order to install that, you copy this command from here and go back to your Visual Studio code, paste it. Great, this is also installed. Now let's start writing our code. So if you go to the source folder within the app.js file, the code that is pre present will become the front end of our application. But before working on the front end, what we are going to do is we are going to first create a file within the source folder and call it use arcana auth.js. Here within this file, what we are going to do, we are going to import and initialize the auth provider. And then we will call the different auth APIs within different functions, which we'll use later in the app.js file. So let's first import app mode and auth provider from Arcana auth. So we'll write import app mode and auth provider from Arcana auth. Now the next thing that we have to do is we need to give the app ID. So the app ID is basically the one that have been assigned to you via your Arcana's developer dashboard. So let's go back to our dashboard and you can see that the app ID that is assigned is 2296. So let's go back to our code and write this app ID. The next thing is we will initiate, we will also declare one variable that we are going to call as auth. Now let's write the function and call it use arcana auth. Within this function, we are going to initialize and call different APIs. The very first thing would be to initialize a variable which will store whether this auth SDK is initialized or not. So let's call this state variable initialized and and also you need to initialize it with false because initially our auth will not be initialized the function that we are going to write here would initialize our auth so let's call it initialize auth and make it an asynchronous arrow function. And here, first we are going to check if our auth is not true, then only what we are going to do is we are going to assign this auth as our new instance of the auth provider. Here you need to specify the app ID that we have defined above. And after that, we will initialize this particular auth. So here you also need to mention the app mode so this app mode can vary from being from no UI mode, which we are going to use in this application, or you can also here specify other app modes that are available like full UI mode, which will show you the complete wallet on your screen. And also there is widget mode that you can use. And then once that is done, we will set our initialized variable to true. Great. After this, the next function that we are going to write is logging in the user via social login. So let's call it simply login and make it an asynchronous function. Here, remember, you need to pass in the type of the social login via which the user is trying to log in. Remember, now all of the functions that uh, we are going to write now will only be used only when the initialized variable is set to true. Because until and unless your auth is not initialized, there would be no point of logging in the user or checking whether a user has logged in or not, right? So the first thing that we are going to write here is to check if the initialized is true. If it is true, then we are going to authenticate the user with social and it will provide the social type perfect after that the next thing would be to log in the user via passwordless authentication let us give this function the name login with link 
you need to also provide the email id of the user wherein the magic link would be sent to if again the initialized variable is true then only what we are going to do is log in the user login with link and passing in the email id once that is done we also need to provide uh, write a function which checks in if the user has logged in or not so let's call this function as is logged in then we will return that the user is logged in okay after that we also need to get the account of the user we will call name this function get accounts and return the accounts that a user has so we'll use the auth.provider.request and we will request using the method eth accounts oh wait we forgot to in check if the initialized is true or not uh, the last function that we are going to write is to log out the user from our application. So it will return from the API auth.logout. Great, we are done writing all our functions. Now let's return all of these functions. Okay, so we have returned all of the functions and one of the variable that we had defined and then lastly we need to export this particular function so that it can be used in our app.js file use arcana auth and done so this one is done now we need to go to our app.js file and start building on our front end let me explain you this code one by one so the first thing that we are going to do is we are importing the color ring from react load spinner which we installed earlier we are going to make the changes to our app.css file later. Apart from that, we are also importing the use arcana auth. Now, within the app function, we are going to define multiple state variables. The first one is to check if it's loading or not. Similarly, we will define the logged in or state variable and set it to false. Only after checking if the user has logged in, then only we will assign this uh, particular state variable the value as true. There are other two as well. Uh, one is email. And also the another one is account. We have got all the functions and variables that we had returned in our previous file use arcana auth. So we can simply use this functions and variables now in app.js file as well. The first thing that we are going to do here is within our use effect hook, we are going to uh, run this particular effect on the initial render. So whenever you want to run an effect on the initial render, you need to pass in an empty array. And on the initial render, what it should do, it should initialize our SDK. So we have specifically written this particular function called initialize, which calls our initialize auth function. The next use effect that we are writing is dependent on the initialized variable. So whenever the value of the initialized variable updates, this effect will run again. So within it, we are writing a function called load details and what it is going to do if the initialized is true, that means the, your auth SDK is initialized, it is going to get the value of is logged in, whether it will be true or false, right? If the user is logged in, then what that means, you need to set in the logged in variable as true and then you can get the accounts as well of that particular user. We are again going to write a variable account and getting the account of the users. The account of the user that we are going to use would be the first account. So we are assigning the account uh, a value of account of zero and setting the loading as false because the user has logged in. Otherwise also we will set the loading as false, right? And then call this load details function. Now coming to the front end, the, uh, this code basically creates three views, bases the condition on the variables loading and is logged in. So on the top, it will always show this heading authentication. 
Now, if the if the loading variable is true, it shows you the loading spinner. The next condition is logged in is true. That means the user has successfully logged in. So in that particular case, we will welcome the particular user and also show its account and say that you are logged in successfully. We'll also give a button to log out the user and we will call it log out. How it will function? Let me explain that to you. So we on, on the click of the logout button, it should log out the user, right? So we have uh, also defined a handle logout function here. So when the user logs out, what we need to do, we simply need to set the logged in variable as false and then call the logout function that we had defined earlier. The third condition that is left is if the loading variable is false and the user has not logged in, which goes in here. So that means you need to show the user multiple login options. So within the options, we are showing Google login, Twitch login, Discord login. On click would be sim very simple to define. You just need to call in the login function and pass in the social type like Google, Twitch, Discord, Twitter. And also apart from that, we will also show a form wherein the user will be given two blocks, one for entering the email and second a button wherein they need to click and they will be taken like they will be sent a magic link to their email ID. Be a button on the click of it, what will happen? The lo login with link function would be called with the email that was provided. So when the user enters their email, we also need to write what will happen on the change of the particular value that is provided in the box. So for handling the email change, here we have written another function called handle email change. So this is all about uh, the front end. I hope this was pretty easy to understand. Now before adding in the CSS, let's see how this app looks like. So if we go to our local host, wow, this is our authentication page. So now you can remember which condition would be applicable here. So this would be when the user is not logged in and the loading is not true. So it's showing us these options. So you can let your user log in via Google, Twitch, Discord, Twitter or enter their email and then log in. We are going to make it better with CSS. So let's try to log in via Google. So if I click on Google login here, it will take me to sign with Google option. Let me choose the account and after choosing the account, it should take me to a page where it will show my address as well as a welcome message. And up along with that, it should also give me a logout option. So as you can see here, it's showing me logged in, showing me my address and you are logged in successfully. And along with that, it's showing me a logout button. Let's see if I click on logout button, whether I'm taken to back to the authentication page or not. So I click on logout. Yes, I'm back on my page. Right now, as you can see, the app looks a bit rough. So why not add the flavor of some CSS to it and make it more beautiful? So the GitHub repo that I've given in the description box, you can copy paste the code that is given in the app.css file and go back to your Visual Studio code here within app.css, remove all the code that is present and paste the code that's present on my GitHub repo. Hit save. Now magic will happen and let's see how our application looks like. So as you can see here, now it's looking much better. Let's again try to log in via say Google and see how the page looks like after the user is logged in. It is looking much better. And if I click on log out, it takes me back to the authentication page. Congratulations, we have successfully built our Web3 application wherein we have integrated the Arcana Auth SDK to let our DAP users get onboarded via social and passwordless authentication mechanisms. Now it's time for you to play around with it a bit and you can also now use a different app modes to see how that looks like. Along with that, you can also start playing around with Arcana storage SDK to add more functionalities to your application. So that's all about this video. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more such videos in future.